Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to set up an Udo development environment on Windows using Docker. Now I'll be following my article on opensourcehustle.com and I'll have the link to that article in the description. But before I start with the tutorial, let me show you what you will be getting out of this. Here I have Docker desktop and you could see that there are three containers running. We have the DB container which contains the Postgres service and we have two Udo containers. One has Udo 17 and one has Udo 18. That's the convenient thing about Docker. You could have multiple Udo containers running simultaneously while using different versions. So let's access our Udo containers. I have mapped one of the containers to port 8068 and another container to port 8067. Now the default username and password are admins. For example, here is the Udo 18 one. Additionally, you will be able to add your own custom modules and work on these custom modules using your text editor. For example, I added a custom module called hustle website and i'll be able to activate it and work using vs code to further develop this website module and here is the custom website module i also have this module in the article just for you to use for testing purposes so with you knowing what you'll be getting out of this article let's get back to it let's start with some benefits of using docker if you have already tried to set up udo on windows you would have noticed that there are some compatibility issues different python versions install different packages and these packages don't get along sometimes now with docker you will not have these issues as the udo container comes ready with all the dependencies installed on it another benefit is that you will be able to run different Udo containers while having different versions. And you can map these containers to different ports as you saw in my demo. So let's start with installing Docker on Windows. All you have to do is go to the Docker official page and download Docker desktop for Windows. You'll need to set up an account, which is free for individual use. Now I have already downloaded Docker. Simply follow with the default installation and you are good to go. Now with Docker desktop installed, you'll have something as follows. To the left, you can see your containers images and volumes. I'll go further into these when we will be setting up our Udo containers. Now Docker Desktop comes with Docker Compose and Docker Compose helps you set up multi-container applications and Udo is a multi-container application as just the Udo container is not enough you will be needing a Postgres container as well. Docker Compose will help us create both of these containers the Udo container and Postgres container very easily. Let's start by creating the necessary directories for this project. I've created a directory called tutorial and I open VS code in it. Now you'll need to create an add-ons directory for each Udo container that you will be running. We'll be running two containers. That's why I have two add-ons containers here. Next, you'll need to create a config directory and inside it have udo.conf file. Next, we will add all these directives to our docker compose.yaml file. This YAML file basically describes what containers should docker create. Now inside these services, we will have three things that we will be creating. A DB container, Udo 18 container, and Udo 17 container. Now the first part of what we will be creating is the image. These images are pulled from Docker Hub. There is a link to Docker Hub here. You could visit it and inside Docker Hub you can search for all kinds of services. So let's search for Udo and here we have the official Udo image. Now next to the image name you have the tag and basically this is the version number of this image. So if we go here Udo image and click on the tag section we can see all the Udo versions that we could install. So here, for example, I have Udo 18, Udo version 17 down here and Postgres version 16. These are also adjustable and you could change these versions. Next, we have the ports, which describes on which port you will be able to access this service. On the left side, we have the host port and on the right side, we have the container port. In this example, we are not changing the port. We are using the same port for the container and for the host. In some cases, you will need to map the port to a different number and that's the case in our Udo containers. We don't want to run both of these containers on the same port number. That's why we are mapping the container port to a different port. In this case, 8069, we are mapping it with 8068 on the host machine. In the second Udo container, we are mapping port 8069 with port 8067 on the host machine. That way, we will be able to access both of these containers simultaneously by using different ports. Now, in the Udo sections, we have the depends on, and that basically tells Docker to create the DB container 
container before creating our Udo container as Udo depends on the database first being created. Next, we have the environment, which gives specific variables to the container to help set up the service inside of it. So in this case, we are setting up the Postgres user, its password, and we are setting the path of where Postgres should store its data. Next, we have the volumes, and you can have two types of volumes. You can have either Docker create the volumes for you, or you can map specific directories on your host machine to directories inside the container. Now, what's the purpose of volumes? Containers are not made to be persistent. They are made to be replaceable and disposable. But the data inside these containers should not be disposable. For example, if we are replacing this Postgres container with a newer version, the newer version should still be able to access the previous data. Otherwise, we'll lose it. So volumes allow you to store data inside the container on your host machine by mapping the directory inside the container to a directory in your host machine. So in the Postgres example, we are mapping a Docker created volume called UduDB data with the following path inside the container, which contains our Postgres data. In case of our Udo containers, we are mapping this Docker created volume with this path inside Udo, which contains our Udo data. And we are mapping to other directories, which we have manually defined, that being the config directory, which we created and the add-ons directory. Now, this might make you wonder, when do I use the Docker created volume? And when do I specify the path of the volume? Now, in our case, you can see that container created data is being stored in the volumes created by Docker. And when it comes to data that we add to the container, we are specifying custom paths for these volumes. For example, the data generated by the Udo inside the container is mapped to a Docker created volume. But the configuration file that we will create and the custom add-ons we will add, we have manually created these directories and mapped these volumes with directories within the containers. Also, when you are using Docker created volumes, you need to declare them as we have done here below. Now, the last part is the command part, and this allows you to run a command inside the container. This specific command is used for Odoo to create the necessary database in the Postgres container. So here we are specifying the database name. We are specifying the DB user and DB password, which have been set up here in the environment variables above. Also, an important note is the dash I base flag, which is used to initialize a database. Now, this flag should be removed after the first launch of this container. If we keep this flag, that means on each container restart, the database will be recreated, therefore removing all the previous data. And we don't want that. Now, the last thing, let's add the configuration directives to the udo.conf file. Here, we are basically specifying the add-ons path location, which is linked to the volume we have created, which is mapped to our add-ons directory here on the host machine. And it is specifying where to store the data, which is mapped to the Docker created volume, udo-web.data. Now here I have a custom add-on that you could download and you could use it for testing. This contains a custom website module. Extract this file and add it to the add-ons directory if you want to test it. Now with this, we are able to run the containers. Make sure that Docker desktop is running before using uh, the Docker compose command. So here I have Docker running. Now open your terminal. You could use PowerShell, CMD, or Git bash. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you are in the same directory where docker compose.yaml file is and type in docker compose up dash d. Now the d flag lets this command run in the background. Otherwise, the shell will be taken and you will see all kinds of logs here. But since all the logs are stored in the docker desktop app, we don't need to see them here. I'm going to click enter. We can see that the docker images are being pulled. Next, the volumes are being created. At last, the containers are created. If we open docker desktop, we can see that we have the db container running here. Here, Udo 18 and Udo 17 and their mapped ports. If we go to the volume section, we can see also the volumes created by Docker. Let's try to access one of these applications. So one of them is on port 8068 localhost. Let's log in by using the default user and pass being admin. Let's search for the custom module that we have added, which is hustle website and we can see the module over here let's activate it let's skip and start from scratch let's close this and we can see our custom website module working let's also try to access our second container which is using port 8067 i'm gonna type admin admin i'm gonna go to settings go down and we can see that this is udo 17 let's go to this one 
go to settings okay, the session has expired go to dash web to log in admin admin let's go to settings go down and we can see that this is udo 18 now one last note there is some useful flags that you could use now since these containers and database has been initialized let's remove the i base flag from both of these containers the dash u and the module name flag updates a specific module on restart if you are working on a custom module this flag is very useful let's add it to our udo 18 container which will update our hustle website module on restart the next flag is the dash dash dev equals xml flag this flag updates the xml without even restarting the udo service it updates the xml simply on page refresh now with these new flags let's delete these containers and recreate them you will see that we will not lose any progress as we are using persistent volumes the newly created db container will still use the previous data and so will udo so let's delete these containers by running docker compose down and let's recreate these containers by running docker compose up the flag it will use our newly created command make sure the ibase flag is also removed now if i refresh this page we can see that everything is still in its place now let's try the newly added flags for example the xml flag let's go to the add-ons directory go to hustle website open the views and open the index.xml which is basically this page we have here the test testo section let's change it to test website for example save this refresh the page and we can see that it updated it now for changes that are being made for controllers or models you will need to restart the udo service to restart a specific docker container you will run docker compose restart and the container name for example udo 18 and if i refresh the page we are still back online now here i have also a cleanup section if we want to delete all of these environments and delete the corresponding volumes you would run docker compose down dash v flag after running this if we open our docker desktop we can see that there are no containers and there are no volumes so as you can see docker eliminates lots of compatibility issues while remaining lightweight thank you for watching